So we go to the phones, and this is a treat for one of our listeners because he calls in whenever we have scientists on and special people. Bill from West Hartford, Connecticut, and I'll let Bill do his routine. Go ahead, Bill. Yes. Hi, George. Thank you for saying that. And hi, <laughs> astronaut Garen. I'm an amateur astronomer, and I'm a pro space program enthusiast, both manned and unmanned missions. For the last 50 years or more, since I was a teenager, about age 15 in 1965, I'm George and Ori's age, uh, during the time of the old Gemini missions before Apollo. And I actually have your book, The Orbital Perspective, in my lap right now. Perfect. I got it recently. And I have a question, George. I'm going to read it, so I'm not going to ramble on. Let All me, right. Let me go ahead. All right. All right. And Ron, and in the spirit of your great book, I want to ask you about my own perspective that I dearly wish you personally would, as someone who has ties to NASA, convince NASA of something that NASA could do greatly in the near future, approximately two and a half years from now, that re- relates to the orbital perspective. Maybe you would need a presidential directive needed by President Obama. I don't know. Uh, this great idea of mine is to make the early 2018 unmanned flight, which unfortunately will be unmanned, which I hope would be manned, of the first Orion spacecraft with a new SLS huge rocket, first test mission up to lunar orbit and back to the Earth, into not only an actual manned mission to lunar orbit in 2018 instead, like Apollo 8 was when NASA was doing very, very bold things, but my point is, for world peace, have those four astronauts, because there's room for at least four crewmen, be two American astronauts and two Russian cosmonauts, or two, two American astronauts, one Russian cosmonaut, and one Chinese taikonaut fly man uh, to the moon, to lunar orbit, and back to the Earth, because not only would it um, push ahead, uh, make quicker uh, in 2018, the first manned test flight of Orion instead of April of 2023, which Aviation Week and Space Technology now says is the prospective date of the first mission EM-2 with humans to the, to the moon and back. But it would also cement world peace or help to do that. Mm. I, think, I think Vladimir Putin would love to have finally at least one or two Russian cosmonauts go to the vicinity of the moon. Well, it's a lot. What do you think of that, Ron? Well, I, I think it's a it's a great idea, Bill. I think you you hit on two um, really important points that are, that are near and dear to me. One is the importance of cislunar space, the importance of our nearest neighbor, the the continued exploration of our nearest neighbor, um, and I think that it would benefit humanity a great deal if we established a, a transportation infrastructure between the Earth and the Moon to uh, enable routine flights between Earth and our nearest neighbor and a permanent human presence on the Moon. And I think that, you know, a mission like that would be a a really good first step. The other point that you brought out was the international cooperation aspect of it. And I I agree with you 100%. I think it's really important for the U.S. to have the capability to launch humans in space. And once we have that, I think that's not a ticket for us to now go it alone. It's 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 a way for us to even to expand the international collaboration that we have in the space program. The, the the space program rises figuratively and literally above a lot of the the conflicts and the problems that we have on our planet. And I think the more nations that are involved in this collaborative effort, the the better off we're all going to be because it creates a platform. It creates a platform of things that we have in common. It, pre- it creates a platform of, of personal relationships, a platform of trust that we can then hopefully jump off from and start to address the things that we don't agree on. And I think uh, what we tend to do is the exact opposite. We tend to use those things that we agree on as leverage to force the things that we don't agree on. So I think those two aspects of, of your idea, I think, uh, are really great. And the other thing I w- wanted to bring up is is I admire um, – your work as an as a amateur astronomer because I see that as the other side of the coin of the orbital perspective. You know, yeah. when you look at the planet from space, you realize that, that we obviously have one planet. We're all in this together. And when you look at the, the heavens from from Earth, you realize we have one sky, and we're all looking. We're all riding through the universe, looking out our own individual windows out onto the universe from the different parts of Spaceship Earth, and and we're all on this together.
together. So it's the other side of the coin. Ron, what do you think of the uh, privatization of space in terms of uh, these companies now building their own rockets to uh, to go into space? Yeah, I think it's a it's a critical step in the continued um, human exploration of space. I think um, we still have a, a great deal to learn about operations in low Earth orbit, but I think we've gotten to the to the point uh, where it's feasible for commercial activities to take over um, major portions of that of that uh, of those operations in the Earth orbit. And what that does is it, it it frees up the large government space agencies to do what they've been chartered to do in the first place, and that's exploration and to see what's over the next hill and to push the envelope. And I think you know commercial spaceflight um, is going to be a critical point, a part of this whole equation. Uh, and I and I think you know we need to get to the point where space operations are financially sustainable too. And I think once you bring in commercial activities and they can start um, showing that they can make a profit doing this, then and they have for many years, but not not necessarily in the human spaceflight end of it. Um, I, I think that will really enable a lot of other economies of scale that will will take us throughout the solar system.